to go on. Yes. So quickly, quickly, quickly. Any idea on lost friends? Any idea on lost friends? Hello. Hello. Do I have your attention, please? Do I have your attention? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, like I said earlier, I said um, if you have any idea on the lost friends, the last time I told you we we're gonna treat this poem, lost friends. If anybody here who has read anything on lost friends or have any idea on lost friends, um, if you can just um, raise up your hand and then, then tell us what you know or what you've read about lost friends. Quickly, 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 quickly. Yes, let's do this. Let's be snappy about this and we move on. Yes. Yes. Oh, no idea. No idea. Hello. No idea. Hello. Yes. Chantel, do you have anything for us? Hello? say yes last week we talked about mark we learned about mark calling some um literary devices okay and we answered some questions to mark caller okay okay yeah. okay uh that was last week that that's a good one uh, we want to look at what we have for today okay paula your hand is up what do you have for us on uh, lost friends Um, so please, from what I read, mm. I think um, Larry Peters is trying to tell us that when um, due to like a person's position or power or status in life, he like tends to forget about his old friends or his old um, people who he struggled with to get where he is. So it's mm. uh, so like some of the friends get to feel like um, they are not of the same class or status as the people who were with them before. So, like, they distance themselves from us. So, that's what I understand. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Let me ask you, uh, who, who, okay, okay, let me, let me leave that. I'll come back to that. Any other idea, please? Any other idea? Afenyo Caleb, are you with us? Afenyo Caleb, are you with us? Yes, what have you read about the poem? So I didn't read. Oh. <laughs> okay, anyone else who has... Because the, I remember asking you guys to go and read on this poem. I remember asking you to go and read on it. That was last week. And so please, uh, we need to be up and doing. Um, if I ask you to go and read something, please go and do that so that it becomes easy for us what we meet okay so kind of please next time make sure you read before we, we meet all right so basically um we are looking at like i said earlier lost friends and then um let me just go to um the short commentary and then the okay so this is the commentary on the lost friends now it says that the poem lost friends paint a picture of what can happen when people we know closely people um you know we've you know we've been so close um you know close with people we've been so uh, some are very very close pals very very close um like childhood friends people you grew up with people you um, you may have even known way back in your schooling days, maybe from business school um, uh, to uh, senior high to the university, 
all these friends, and some of them you might have eaten in the same bowl, you know, uh, uh, bath from the same bucket, you know, slept on the same bed, you know, uh, did virtually everything together. Then suddenly, these people become rich or very important in the society, in the community. Then it looks like, you know, there is a break in that kind of friendship because of their newly acquired status or their, 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 you know, level in the society, in the community. So former friends can no longer get access to them because of, because of um, um, this, their newly acquired status in the, in the society uh, or in the country. Um, old friends are not able to get access to them anymore. You see, in most cases, they try to build a wall, a wall of uh, uh, security or a wall of uh, um, um, what have you around themselves. So it becomes difficult for you as an old friend to get access to them or to get close to them. Now, then it goes on. Then it goes on that former friends can no longer get access to them. Now, in the poem, it is our sessions that ensure that there are no unwelcome visitors. Now, uh, the assertion is, um, according to uh, my research, it's a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large breed of dog, often used as a guard in rich people's homes. So they are kind of dogs that, you know, are used in rich people's homes. Uh, these kind of dogs... <laughs> Uh, even what they eat is really expensive. And so these dogs are in the, the homes of the rich people who, uh, you know, more or less, uh, uh, you know, to guard the rich people against what unwelcome visitors. So if you are not invited, if you are not, you know, uh, allowed to come in, it becomes difficult for you because of the wall of protection that they have, you know, uh, they have around themselves. The wall of, you know, uh, protection that they have around themselves, especially the assertion dog and, you know, and so on and so forth. So it goes on to say that, it goes on to say that, um, in the point, it is assertions that ensure that there are no unwelcome visitors. But in real life, electric fences and bodyguards may also be part of the ring of protection thrown around the upwardly mobile rich. Now, you go to some homes as well. You see, you see that on the fence, on the uh, you know, on the wall, on the wall, there are electric wires that are placed on the wall, connected, that people cannot easily or unwelcome people or, you know, even thieves cannot come in, you know, or break into, uh, into the home. Or their bodyguards, their security men and what have you, you know, that's, that are put in place to protect this, quote unquote, old friends that have become rich. Now, so with all these things that they do around themselves, the assertion, you know, dogs, some of them in their homes, the security uh, or electric wires that they have on their walls, the security men or the bodyguards that they, they have around themselves to protect them, you know, or to protect this um, rich people who were one time our friends, to protect them, it becomes difficult for you an old friend to go close to them if you are not welcome, especially if you're not welcome. Even if you are welcome, sometimes you, 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 you struggle to, to break through some of this and you are scared, you know, looking at all these things around them because friends that uh, maybe some years past, you guys had absolutely nothing. You were so close, you were so tight, you eat together, do everything together virtually. Then all of a sudden, you know, boom, they become rich. And then they have all these things around them. And it makes it uncomfortable getting close to them. Now, then it goes on that the transformation has a dramatic effect in that, in that 
there is a complete change of lifestyle from one of carefree existence into a life akin to staying in prison. So he says that this transformation, okay, this, this uh, um, uh, riches that they've acquired, that has brought a transformation to their life, it says that it is so, um, uh, you know, it has that kind of effect on their lifestyle. You see, when you were poor or when you were an average um, um, person, it is always easy for you to easily flow, to easy go, easily go to wherever you want to go to, to easily attend programs, to do whatever you want to go, do. Now, but when you become rich, um, some of them begin to get scared that, oh, somebody may just come in and attack me and kill me or and destroy me or what have you, or what, and so on and so forth. And so because of this, they all have all those things around them. And so the kind of carefree kind of life they live, the kind of, uh, 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 you know, freedom they, ha they used to have, the kind of uh, life they used to live. For instance, you can, you know, when you are not rich, you are, you are, you are a mere teacher like myself. You can easily go to the streets, buy wachi and eat, buy kinky and eat, and just, uh, you know, go out and do whatever you want to do. Even teachers play football with the students on the field. And, you know, because that is, that is a normal life. Now, then all of a sudden, one of a collect, uh, one of um, maybe one of the, uh, a colleague teacher um, just, boom, becomes rich. The kind of things he or she used to do with the, you know, the former colleagues will be difficult for him or her to come back and do some of those things. So their, you know, newly acquired wealth becomes, you know, more or less like a prison. Even though they have the money, they have the riches and everything, but they seem to find themselves in that, you know, in some kind of prison because of the money they have. So it becomes difficult for them to just go out and do the old things that they used to do. The usual thing, the buying of watches on the street, the buying of kinky on the street, you know, the going out and, you know, doing all sorts of things. Instead of going out to, to do jogging or whatever it is, they would prefer to have a gym in the home. So they don't go out and go and do all that kind of jogging on the street because they are scared people, you know, may attack them. And even aside that, they have all sorts of security around them. Instead of going out to go and buy watches, somebody, a security man or a, a house up or whatever it is, will go out and, you know, so they are newly, you know, uh, acquired riches, you know, more or less comes as all. So it says that it's aching, that is, it's likened to staying in prison. Now, you know, when you're in prison, uh, people only come to visit you when the time is right. Nobody can just get up and come and visit you. No. So even your old friends can't just get up and come and visit you unless, of course, you extend, you know, um, 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 a welcoming hand to them to also come and visit. Aside that, you know, you are, you, are, you are more or less like in a prison. People can get close to you, and you know, because you have all this security and what have you around you, so it becomes difficult for them to, you know, get close to you. Now, then it goes on to say that, moreover, instead of being happy, those who have moved upwardly perpetually live on the edge in attempt to maintain the new status in life or move up even higher. So it says that, Instead of being happy, those who have moved upwardly, those who have become rich, those who have going, you know, upward, perpetually, continuously live on the edge in attempt to maintain. You see, once you are rich, you always want to maintain that level of richness. You all, you wouldn't want to become poor. You always want to maintain. Either you maintain or you go higher. And some of them, by virtue of this, some of them you know, continue to, to leave, you know, uh, 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 how, how do I put it? You know, a life that even if they are not able to afford because of what they've enjoyed before, even if they are not able to afford, they'll continue to, you know, um, to try to live that kind of life because they don't want to come down. They want to continue to enjoy that kind of affluence. They want to continue to enjoy that kind of riches. So, Instead of being happy, those who have moved upwardly perpetually live on the edge in an attempt to maintain the new status in life or move up even higher. 
The effect is that they become addicted to whatever object they are chasing. So one, you see, like I said earlier, once you, you become rich, uh, you continue you continue to try, you know, you continuously try to, to maintain that standard or maintain that level. So they become addicted. They always want to be rich. So they'll continue to do things to be rich. So that is why somebody will say that the rich will continue to be rich because they continue to do things to be rich. Some of them will continue to do a lot of investment to be rich. Some of them may use the right means. Some of them may use the, the foul means because they are, re, are addicted to the riches. So they continue to chase whatever it is that will give them more power or that, that will give them you know, greater wealth. So the effect is that they become addicted to whatever object they are chasing, be it greater wealth or power. So they continue to chase after, after that thing. Now, the more they do this, the more they feel dissatisfied like the dog that keeps trying to bite its own tail. You see? Now, if you look at this, it says the more they do this, the more they continue to do all sorts of things, you know, to feel, the more they, the more they continue to do this, the more they feel dissatisfied, like the dog that keeps trying to bite its own tail. It's funny, right? <laughs> well, so people continue to, you know, try to, to gain more, to achieve more, to have more, you know. And you see, the more you get, the more you want to have more, the more you want to have more. Uh, for instance, uh, maybe you have a, um, um, a vehicle, maybe you have a one saloon car, and you see somebody driving a four-wheel drive, you also want to, you want to get that, you know, you get that, you see somebody who is driving more than that, you want to get it. So you continue to chase and continue to chase and continue to chase, you know, and it gets to a point where, you know, you, 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 instead of you to be con content with what you have, you want to have more. You want to have more. And people will continue to strive to have more instead of them to be content with what they have. And many times, if you're not content with what you have and you are striving to continue to have more, to have more, to have more, to have more, if you're not careful, you, you end up, you know, stabbing yourself at the back you end up you know destroying yourself and that is why it says that they they bite their own tail like the dog that continues to you know bite its own tail it's not supposed to be like that but see because they continue to chase after affluence they continue to chase after greater wealth they continue to chase after power some of them may find themselves doing things they are not supposed to do they find themselves doing illegal things because they want to have more they want to have more some want to you know have even um, private jet and what have you. And so in trying to get all those things, they begin to what? Stab themselves at the back or like the dog, they begin to bite their own tail. You can imagine how painful that is going to be. Now this can affect their health as well as their perception and old friends may fail to recognize them because success has changed them so much. So because of um, um, how dissatisfied they are, because somebody has, you know, what they don't have and they always want to have that. They always want to get more power. They want to always want to have greater wealth. They always want to achieve more, you know. That may affect some of them, their health. It may even, ask, you know, affect their perception. It may affect the way they look at things. Because all they care about is money, 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 wealth, wealth, power, power, authority. They just want to continue to, have all those things and by so doing old friends may fail to even recognize them old friends may even struggle to go close to them so that is why it comes down to the title of the poem lost friends lost friends people who achieve greater and then their friends that they used to know many years ago you know uh, um, find it difficult to even go close to them or find it difficult to even um, um, have any form of connection with them, more or less like, you know, they are lost completely. So those friends that, or those people that used to be friends, those classmates that used to be friends, those colleagues that used to be friends, when they become rich, they are more or less like lost. They become lost friends. Lost friends. So basically, this is what the commentary is about. 
if there is any um, question so far on the commentary before we go on if there's any qu question on the commentary please you are liberty to ask that question quickly let's explain then we can move on to the first stanza so if you have any question anything you do not understand or you, there's something you want to add up to what i've just said you are liberty to do that just raise up your hand quickly and mute yourself and then let's let's get that done yes any question please question please yes any question please yes emmanuel fumado what do you have for us yes fumado sir yes uh and the poem talks about how rich uh, when somebody becomes rich how he or she would like to maintain higher heights mm. and separate he, himself from his colleagues because of the richness and mm. sometimes due to what surrounds the richness like money fame the friends the friends he made before will not get to know him when he becomes rich mm. okay good one yes are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes. What have you learned so far? Sir, I was hmm. learned that uh, the poem helps us know that uh, when someone becomes rich, hmm. if uh, he forget, uh, sometimes they forget about their past friends, their past life. Mm. And distance themselves from their colleagues. Okay. Due to their higher status. Okay. Thank you very much. And of course, they want to achieve more. They want to have more. Okay, yes. Kumi Monica. Kumi Monica. Say. Yes, tell us what you've learned so far. So please, I've learned that. No matter where you are, you don't need to forget about your old friends because Good. they may be important to you wherever you go. Mm. Well, that's a good one. Like they say, old friends are usually the best, right? <laughs> okay. So um, if there is nothing else, let's go to the first stanza. Let's look at the first stanza. What, what does it say? Now, it says, okay, so um, that like the title, the lost friends. Okay. Now, they are imprisoned in dark suit and air conditioned offices, Alsatians ready, and the door on the cell on the saliva carpeted, ready at the door, sorry, our sessions ready at the door. I think I have end, so she ready at the door on the saliva carpeted floor. Now, they are in prison. This rich friends, it says they are in prison. Now, they are in prison in dark suit. So the suit they wear, you know, wear suit and put on the, the, the tie, you know, every time, whether raining or, 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 or the sun is high, high up there, they are, they are suit with their ties put on, tied around their necks, you know, and air-conditioned offices. So, it says, so these, this thing qualifies or describes how imprisoned they are. Now, when you work in, in an office, those big, big offices, you can't just get up and wear anything to the office. Unlike when you come to the classroom, teachers, you know, wear normal wear, you know, or normal dresses to the classroom. But in these offices, these rich guys, these rich men, many times they are in their what? 
You know, you go to the bank, for instance, the bank managers and what have you, they are imprisoned in their own suit. So he says they are imprisoned in that suit and they are air conditioned officers. Then at, at their door is the assertion that is ready at the door. Like we said earlier, the assertion is, is a large breed of dog often used as a guard in rich people's homes. The assertion again is, is a large breed of dog often used as a guard in rich people's home. Now, it goes on to say that they are very expensive to buy and to feed. Now, if you don't have enough to eat yourself, if you don't have enough to, to, to provide for you, your, your family, there's no way you're going to go for, you know, a dog like the Alsatian. No, there's no way you're going to do that. So the Alsatian only goes again to reinforce the fact that these people are rich. That is why they're able to afford a dog like the Alsatian because they are expensive and they are also expensive to feed. They are, they are feeding alone. I'm sure, I'm sure can, can, pay, can pay, you know, some of us our rent and, and, uh, and, and pay our fees because these dogs are expensive and they're also, you know, really expensive to feed or their feed or their food or their feeding is, is expensive to provide. Now, so these assertions or this, you know, um, dogs, they are ready at their door to do what? To protect them, to protect them against what? Unwelcome people, unwelcome friends, unwelcome colleagues, unwelcome um, family members, unless, of course, you have been what? Invited. If you have not been invited, these dogs are ready, you know, to pounce or, you, or they are ready to scare you away. So our sessions ready at the, at the door, on the saliva carpeted floor, on the saliva, you know, uh, let me read something. It says the saliva comes from the Alsatian and because there is plenty of it, it is compared, sorry, it is, yes, it is compared to a carpet. So the, the saliva comes from the Alsatian and because a lot of it comes, you know, a lot of that saliva comes out, you know, it is compared to, you know, um, the floor. And so if you look at that carefully, you can see that, you know, the saliva of the, um, of, of the assertion is compared to, a, a, you know, a carpeted floor. Now, so we can have a literal device there. But we'll come back to that and I'll ask you what literal device is there. Let me explain that again for the benefit of um, those of you who do not understand. We are saying that the carpeted floor or the saliva has been compared to a carpeted floor. The saliva has been compared to a carpeted floor. We are saying that the saliva of the Alsatian is compared to, because the saliva, it, you know, a lot of the saliva comes out of those dogs. A lot of the saliva comes. You know, have you ever seen some of these big dogs? You know, it's like saliva continues to come out of their mouth. You know, they're always drooping with saliva. And so a lot of so the saliva comes out of their mouth. And then the, the point compares that saliva to what? Carpeted floor. Now, then it goes on to the next stanza. It says, they spend their night in jet airlines would change them meat air to show how much they dare. They spend their night in jet airlines. They spend their night in jet airlines. Now, these rich people, these rich people, virtually, most at times, because of the nature of their work, because of um, um, how they work, because of how, what they want to achieve, many times they are traveling here and there, traveling, 
you know, to one country, to the next country. And in most times, they spend their night in the jet airlines, traveling here and there, traveling, you know, in, out. Now, now let me read something. It says, in this stanza, the reference is to someone who is in a mad rush to reach a, a destination. Now, using the jet airlines, you know, it's a way to prove that you are, um, when you are going somewhere, you want to get there quickly. For instance, somebody is traveling to Kumasi from Accra. The person would prefer to go for um, an airplane rather than going by road. So you go for airplane, it makes you reach Kumasi faster than going by road. I believe you are going by road, it should be between four to six hours from Accra. I'm not too sure exactly how many hours. Maybe four, five, six hours. But by airplane, it could go, you know, maybe latest two hours, you should be in Kumasi. Now, then it says that, which may metaphorically be a particular station in life. Therefore, traveling by jet planes has both literal and metaphorical meanings. Now, then it says, would change their meat air is deliberate, is a deliberate exaggeration or hyperbole. Now, exaggeration is the same as hyperbole. Hyperbole is an excessive exaggeration. When we talk about hyperbole, it is what? An excessive exaggeration. And it says, we change their meat air to show how much they dare. You know, it could also mean to dare to show that they are rich. To show that because people who want to go by airplane to Kumasi from Accra to Kumasi, you know, it's only the rich that can afford that to show that they have, to, sh to show that they dare to do whatever they want to do. Now, if you are a poor person or an, um, an average uh, person or an average, uh, um, your income is an average one, there's no way you would dare to go by airplane from Accra to Kumasi. Unless, of course, you know, you want to go hungry for the rest of the month. You wouldn't try that. You, pref you prefer to go by, um, uh, how do you call it, by road. Maybe 60 cities, 50 cities, 60 cities between that, you should be able to get to Kumasi safely, maybe in a VIP bus, you know. But then some will prefer to go by air because, you know, they have the money, they have the, 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 the wherewithal, they have what it takes to go by plane. So uh, they would change their meat air to show how much they dare. Now, then it goes on to say, to say that drunk from the vertigo of never catching their tails, they never seem to know when not to bite their tails. I like that. Now, the vertigo is means dizziness and loss of balance dizziness and loss of balance now this is to, this goes to prove that this rich people you know because they are so drunk with riches because they are so you know uh, um, l you know off balance because of the riches they are they are pushed and they continue to go and they seem to be off balance they are they are completely they completely lose touch of the reality they continue to chase and you know when you continue to chase after money continue to chase after money it gets to a point where you seem to be you know you lost touch of reality you don't really know what is going around you anymore your friends that is that is where people begin to lose friends because some of these friends would want to call and want to visit and blah, blah, blah. But they seem to be so engrossed with whatever they are doing to, to, to gain more money, to gain more, um, um, how do you call it? To gain more power, to gain more greater influence and affluence and what have you. And so by so doing, they seem to lose touch of reality. They seem to lose their friends as well. So it goes to say that the implication in this context is that political power has made people who were once simple drunk. Now, let me explain that. Some people were once simple people. Some of them were even teachers. Some of them were uh, uh, nurses. Some of them were, you know, simple, 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 simple people. But some of these people, as a result of perhaps politics, 
as a result of more power affluence, they seem to lose touch of the reality. And you see, once you go into it, you are so drunk that you continue to do, you know, so much of that. And you see, some of them, because of how drunk they are by their political uh, um, um, standards or level, they lose their senses. If I say lose their senses, not like as in like, um, 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 uh, not like become uh, plainly mad or whatever it is, but their sense of reasoning, their, their thinking capability has been reduced to zero. That is why you see some of these are politicians, the kind of decisions they take, the kind of things they do. You realize that there is no sense. Even a normal a, a, child, a young child, you know, <laughs> 10 years, 15 years, <laughs> can, can, tell that, can tell that <laughs> what these people are doing, there's no sense in it. There's no sense in it. Uh -huh. That is the problem we have. There is no sense in what they are doing. Absolutely no sense. Like some of this, they become po politically drunk that when you are giving, uh, um, 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 how do you call it, a solution to them, you are giving them an idea about things that, that will help because they are not on your political divide or because they don't support your, um, um, the, the party you support, the, the, the party you belong to, they see you as an enemy. Meanwhile, what you are telling them makes sense. It makes sense. So they do all sort of silly and foolish things because they've lost touch of the reality. All they care about is themselves, myself, 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 my family. And you see, the funny thing is this. We, the young people of, of today, we, the young citizens that are supposed to think twice, that are supposed to sit down and analyze things and do things the right way because some of them might have given us some 200 cities, 300 cities, 500 cities, we also begin to act foolishly. And that is the problem we have. Now, let me not go so much into politics, but these are some of the realities. And these are some of the things that the poem is talking about. So the implication in this context is that political power has made people who were once simple people drunk. People who were once simple people so you realize that some people, before they get into politics or before they go into, go into politics, you realize that they are sensible. They say sensible things. But once they get into politics, their thinking caps have been removed. And so they don't think upright anymore. They don't think sensibly anymore. Their thinking caps, they remove, I don't know where they remove their thinking caps and put them. They do all sort of silly things. And these are some of the problems. These are some of the things that we have, you know. So it says, drunk from the vertigo of never catching their tails. They never seem to know when not to bite their tails. You see, they never seem to know when to stop certain things. There's a limit to everything, but because they are, they are drunk, you know, when you, when you meet a drunk person on the street, you meet a drunk person on the street, this drunk person you know, it's walking and, you know, the walking is not, you know, uh, how do you call it? The walking is not the, the usual walking that you see a normal person that is walking on the street. You know, they begin to, the air or the wind begins to blow them off. They begin to stagger on the street, you know, because they are drunk. At that particular moment, they are not too sure exactly what they are doing. They can see all sort of silly things. They can see all sort of foolish. They can insult and, you know, do all sort of silly things. Why? Because they are drunk and then they've lost touch of the reality at that time. And so they do all sort of silly things because they are drunk. And that is what money or power or affluence has done to people who were once sensible. It has made them to, to be completely drunk. They are so drunk. And they never, you know, of never catching their tails, they never seem to know when not to bat, sorry, when not to bite their tails. So they do all sort of things 
by biting their tails. Now, what does it mean by biting their tails? They harm themselves without even knowing. The dog that will put the tail in the mouth and bite it. Maybe the dog feels, feels that, oh, putting my tail in my mouth and biting it, it's, it, it, it's something nice. Or the dog feels that it is food. But I see when you bite your tail, you feel the pain. So instead of them to have a limit to whatever they are doing, they continue doing all sorts of silly things, do all sorts of silly things, all sorts of silly things, until they begin to even bite themselves. They bite themselves or they hurt themselves. Now, let's go on to the final stanza. Then I'll come back. Now, their new addiction, uh -huh, money has become addiction to them. Power has become addiction to them. Fame has become addiction to them. You know, affluence, greater wealth has become wealth addiction so their new addiction fortifies their should we fortify their life eh? their new addiction fortifies their life they are getting there while they're going is good they have no time for dreamers their new addiction you see, their new addiction, the things they are addicted to. See, to be addicted to something, to be addicted to something, you know, it's more or less like you can't do without the thing. Those who are addicted to cocaine, when they don't get cocaine within a day, it feels like they are going to die the next moment. That is why they constantly look for cocaine. All right. So the condition of being physically dependent on a soft substance such as cocaine, that is addiction. To be addicted to something is a condition of being physically dependent. So you, are con you continuously depend on that thing because you are so addicted to it. And without that thing, your life is like, you know, your life is like... Uh, it should come to an end now. If you don't get that thing, if you don't get a cocaine, it's like there's something that is happening to you. You know, like you die in the next moment until you get the cocaine. Addiction. Addiction. Now, one can also become addicted to intangible things like power and flattery. People are addicted to flattery. People are addicted to power. When you don't flatter them with nice words, they don't feel good. They are addicted to it that you need to tell them. People are so addicted to power that they must be at the helm of power. They must be at the helm of, you know, affairs to feel that, yes, they have arrived. They are so addicted. You see? So these addictions, you know, affect their health as well. It affects their health. It affects, sometimes it affects their thinking capability. Addiction. It affects their health. Affects their thinking. So they don't, uh, uh, you know, they don't think well. If you're addicted to money, you don't think twice. You don't care about anybody anymore. Instead of you to have compassion on people, you don't care having compassion on, on people because you are so addicted. You are so addicted to money, addicted to fame. Are we here? Yes. Are we making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. So, their new addiction fortifies their lifers. I think I have that here. They are getting there while there's, they're going. While they're going is good. They have no time for dreamers. They have no time for, uh, 
more or less the dreamers could just be people who and they feel are not at their level anymore you know when you get rich to a point you see people who um who were once your friends you see them to be people who are no longer at your level you don't see them to be any anything you don't see them to be anybody and so when people get to that level they can insult people who are even older than them people who are old enough to be their their parents people who are old enough to be their fathers to be their mothers people who are old enough to be their elder brothers why because they are rich even even in our villages today or in our towns or wherever we are coming from when you are an elderly person you don't have money they don't see you as anyone if if the young 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 boys and girls they come to the to the town with their vehicles and they come with money you see the people giving them respect and so by virtue of that they think that those who are younger than them or i mean those who are older than them who are even old enough to be their fathers and their mother they see them as dreamers they have no time for people like that they have no time for people uh, who were once their close spouse who were once their close friends they have no time for them because they see them as dreamers they see them as dreamers so basically this is what the poem is about the poem lost friends so at the end of the day uh you know they lose you know um friendship so this is the poem lost friends friends who are lost as a result of money friends who are lost as a result of wealth friends who are lost as a result of fame friends who are lost as a result of you know popularity and what have you and so on and so forth so they are lost and they don't want to get in touch with people who were once their close friends people who were once their their pals and by so doing they they build all sort of protection around themselves all sort of hedge around themselves that it is difficult for an unwanted friend an unwanted person or an unwelcome person to come close to them and the more they have the more they want to have the more they want to have the more they want to achieve and by so doing they begin to hurt themselves they begin to bite their own teeth hurt themselves you know or destroy themselves they are addicted to wealth they are addicted to fame they are addicted to all these things and they want to have more they want to achieve more and so doing they continue to hurt themselves and they see people who are even old enough people who can be their fathers and their mothers they see them as dreamers and you know and the addiction of course also have an effect on their health you know when you are addicted to cocaine it has it obviously has an effect on your health you may not see today but the effect to surely come once you know you continue to take cocaine and all those things the effect will obviously come so ladies and gentlemen i will pause here for now if you have any question um or something i said about the poem you do not understand you can please um ask your question ask your question ask your question Mike, I find you. Your hand is up. Yes, unmute yourself and ask your question. Sir, so, please. What's the difference between influence and affluence? Now, influence has to do with uh, how you are able to, uh, or let me say, when your life is able to convince someone to influence someone. Now, it could be uh, influencing the person directly or indirectly. For instance. If um, I'm your colleague, I'm your colleague, and I'm doing something bad, because I am your colleague, William, I come to you. Because I'm doing something, you also want to do the same thing. So my life is influencing your life. That is, you know, influence. My uh, yes, influence. My life has made you to also do something. It may be something good or maybe something bad, but my life has influenced you has convinced you or has indirectly pushed you to do something but affluence has to do with riches affluence abundant wealth affluence has to do with riches or abundant wealth wealth so the difference between affluence and riches that is that is it i don't know whether you understand uh you understand that i hope you understand that Yes, sir. 
Good. Uh, let me read the dictionary definition of influence to you. Um, it says, the power to affect persons or event, especially power based on prestige. Power based on prestige. Or causing something without any direct or apparent effort. That is influence. Influence. To influence you. So you see that there are people who, um, how do we call it? Uh, people, when you come to school, for instance, we have something we call peer pressure. Sometimes they may not tell you anything, but because your colleagues are doing it, so they have influenced you. You also want to do the same thing. They have influenced you, so you also want to do the same thing. They haven't asked you to do it, but it's because they are also doing it, so influence. They've influenced you. They've influenced you negatively. So that is the difference between affluence and influence. Um, William, let me come to you. Then Daniel, I'll come to you. So William, ask you. I see your hand was up long ago. So William, sure. Yes. So please, I want to ask that. Uh, mm. Is it always that the rich people lose their friends because of their wealth? Okay. Um, not always. Not always. Um, if you are looking at this poem, yes, it is um, the rich people that usually lose their friends. Now, but I, I, I know that there are some few rich people who, who try to still keep their friends. There are few rich people who try to still keep their friends. But many times, many times, many times, the rich lose their friends. Many times. Because once they are rich, hey, they don't want to go close to um, um, the poor people because um, they feel like if they go close to the poor people, you continue to ask them, Charlie, I need this, tomorrow I need that. They don't want that kind of thing. So you see that the rich want to move with the rich. The poor move with the poor. Uh -huh. Even that is why there are some homes, there are some families. They will never allow their sons or their daughters to marry from a poor background. They will never do it. When you try it, there will be a real issue. They will never allow it. Why? Uh, so the rich will continue to keep their rich cycles. The poor will continue to keep their poor cycles. So you see that the average uh, earners marry average people. The poor marry poor, rich marry poor. On rare occasions that you see that the rich getting married to a poor or the poor getting married to a, on rare occasions that you find things like that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Daniel. So, yes. So I also want to ask that. Uh, hmm. So please hold uh, vertigo. Vertigo. We are saying that vertigo uh, means dizziness and loss of balance. Okay. Dizziness. Dizziness or loss of balance. You see, so the point is saying, the use of the, that word vertigo there, the point is, you know, just using that word to convey the fact that the people are so um, um, drunk with so much wealth, with so much power. So he says, drunk from the vertigo. When you are drunk, what happened? You begin to go dizzy, right? Yes. Good. So they are drunk from the vertigo of never catching their tails. They are drunk, completely drunk. So they are drunk and they are beginning to get dizzy. So the power or the, infl uh, the affluence, the power, the riches, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, has made them so drunk. So they begin to go dizzy. Not, not literally dizzy, but their, their senses Do you understand? It is not literally. Yes, sir. It's not literally that you see the rich people and they are beginning to go dizzy on the streets. No, no, it's not that. Uh -huh. it's that, 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 the, the, that line is not a literal, literal meaning. It's more metaphorical. It has to do with their senses, their thinking, their behavior. Does that make sense? Thank you. Does that yes, make sir. sense? Good. Yes, sir. Okay, Thank Daniel, you. you are welcome. Daniel, your hand is up. Daniel, you can just unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, Daniel, I'm still, your hand is still up, so I'm, I'm waiting for you. Yes. Daniel. Daniel. 
Daniel, are you with us? Yeah, there are actually two Daniels. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Daniel, a fan bear. I hope I'm right. A fan bear. Yes, Daniel, a fan bear. Daniel, a fan bear. Ewoi, your hand to you. You you also have your hand up. Ewoi. Um, sir. Yes. Please. I just want to know whether, like, uh, standard three, line four. Okay. Uh, is it when not to bite their tails or nails? It's tails. Tails. Yes. Okay. Okay. When not to bite their tails? Oh, sorry. It's tails, not nails. Yeah. Forgive me. Forgive me. No, sorry. It's when not to bite their nails. Yes, it's nails, not tails. Nails. It's correct. It's nails. It's nails. Nails. N A I L S. When not to bite their nails. They never seem to know when not to bite their nails. Their nails, not tails. Their nails. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Afang Bedani, your hand is still up. Afang Bedani, your hand is still up. Afang Bedani, your hand is still up. If you don't have any question, you can just, you know, put down your hand. How are you? Okay, your hand is, is down. Your hand is down. Yes, Afangbe, are you with us at all? Afangbe, if you don't have a, anything for us, you can lower your hand. Okay, so let's go on. Let's go on. Now, any questions so far? In absence of questions, I'll read out some questions. I'll read a few, um, some few questions. Uh, and then, you know, If you have any idea, you can just give us, raise up your hand and, and answer the question. Afangbe, your hand was initially up. Can you hear me very well? Afangbe, if you want to talk, um, unmute yourself and talk. I, I can't hear you. Yes, Afangbe, are you with us? Okay. Now, let me ask the first question. What is the poem Lost Friends about? What is the poem Lost Friends about? A, the death of the speaker's childhood friend. B, as one goes up the social ladder, he may lose friends. C, a friend in need is a friend indeed. D, be birds of the same feathers flock together. And E, the poor man has no friend. Boku Yunus, your hand is up. Boku Yunus, your hand is up. Say please, B, as one goes up there. Say please, B. Good. As mm. one goes up the social ladder, he may lose friends. Good. As one goes up the social ladder, he may lose friends. So that is what the poem Lost Friends is about. The poem Lost Friends is about uh, the fact that as one goes up the social ladder, he may lose friends. Good. All right. Number two, what does the Alsatian dog signify? 
What does the Alsatian dog signify? A. A. William, is your hand already up? William, is your hand up? No, sir. I wanted to answer the first question before. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you very much. It's been answered already. Eunice, your hand is still up. Eunice, your hand hey, is please, still... I want to answer the second question. Hey, madam. <laughs> All right, go ahead and answer it. Sir, please, the owner feels the need to protect himself. The owner feels the need to protect... Sir, please, the answer is D. Is D, correct. The owner feels the need to protect himself. So the Alsatian dog you know, um, is what the owner uses to protect himself. So it signifies, you know, uh, uh, the protection of the owner or to protect the owner. Number three, <clears throat> what evidence is there in the poem that his new station has become a burden? What evidence is there in the poem that his new station has become a burden? A, his suit and air condition office are described as a prison. B, the Alsatian costs more to feed than his whole family. C, he has to change flight frequently. D, friends do not come to visit him anymore. <clears throat> and E, he does not even get the chance to eat. He does not get a chance to eat. Now, uh, Tamaklo Shelga, your hand is up. Shelga, number three. Sir, please, the answer is A. Yes. The answer is A. He's a. cute. And air condition office are described as a prison. Good. His suits and air condition office are described as a prison. Number four. What does the dog chasing its own tail signify? I think it should be nail and not tail. In the point we see nail in the point. Okay, 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 okay. There's still two. What does the dog chasing its own tail signify? Yes. What does the dog chasing its own tail signify? A, dogs are playful animals. B, footless search for meaning in life. C, human beings do not know how to handle success. D, the search for things we already have. E, a rich man only has a dog for a friend. Yes. Boko Yunus. Yeah, please, the answer is B. Fruitless search for mean fruitless search for meaning in life. Good. Fruitless search for meaning in life. Fruitless. So the dog chasing its own tail. You know. It's just like a fruitless chase um, search for meaning in life. You continue to chase after things. At the end of the day, it's fruitless. Number five. The use of the word drunk in the poem is an example of... The use of the word drunk in the poem is an example of a simile. B, rhyme. C, alliteration. D, metaphor. And E, onomatopoeia. 
Yes. Oh, the boys, where are you? Michael Apenyo. I've raised my hand. Okay, Michael Apenyo. It's a, a, a metaphor. 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 Metaphor compares without the use of what? As and what? Like. Are we okay with that? Okay. Number six. What does nail biting symbolize in the poem? What does nail biting? Nail biting symbolize in the poem? A. Nervousness. B. Bad training. C. Insincerity. D. Excessive hunger. And E. Disrespect. Yes. Same hand. Same hand. Okay. Say them. Say them. Your hand is up this time, so let me call you. Say them. Uh, nervousness. Nervousness. So the nail biting, you know, when you see somebody biting the nail, could mean that a person is nervous. Okay. Let's go on. Number seven. What valuable lesson does the poem teach? What valuable lesson does the poem teach? A. Don't open your doors to poor people. Don't surround yourself with dogs. Don't neglect your friends in success. Animals are more loyal than human beings. The dog is the best friend of man. Number seven. Number seven. Okay. Oh, the same hands. The same hands. The same hands. Can I have different hands, please? The same hands. The same hands. Okay. Golda. Golda. Okay, don't neglect your friends in success. 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 Number eight, the idea that a rich and powerful change plane mid air is an example of A, simile, B, metaphor, C, personification, D, exaggeration, and E, apostrophe. Number eight, number eight, number eight. Two hands up, up. Okay, Eunice. Say please, D, exaggeration. Exaggeration, correct, 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 exaggeration. Number nine. One of the themes of the poem, Lost Friends, is that A, success makes people forget their past. Friendship and success do not go together. Man should protect the environment. Love conquers all. Fortune smiles on those who work hard. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Oh, the same hands again. Okay, man of Fumado. Success make people forget their past. Good. Success make people forget their past. It makes them forget their past. It makes them forget their friend. It makes them forget even their loved ones. Then the last question for today, number 10. The word addiction suggests that A, success makes us crave for things that are harmful to us. Rich people develop a taste for cocaine. Friends can introduce a person to bad habits. D, power makes people drunk. And E, we cannot do without riches. We cannot do without riches. The last, that's the last one for today. That's the last one for today. Yes. Oh, same hands are up again. Same hands are up. Upper the Ruth, are you there? Upper the Ruth, are you with us? 
I've heard the Ruth. I'm sure you can hear me. <laughs> Are you with us? I want different hands. Hmm? Mate Marceline. Question 10. Marceline. Yes, yes give us the answer Please, to question 10. Say again. Please, can I hear the options again? Okay, A, success makes us crave for things that are harmful to us. B, rich people develop a taste for cocaine. C, friends can introduce a person to bad habits. D, power makes people drunk. And E, we cannot do without riches. Good. Success makes us crave for things that are harmful to us. When we are addicted, addiction, addiction, it makes us crave, continue to search for things that are harmful to us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please, if you have any question, you can ask. If you don't have any question, we'll call it a day. Okay, Kalenam, Akiti Pell. Kalenam, your hand is up. Yes, sir, please. I didn't see the slides of the question. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll get that to you. You have it in your... Um, I think I need to upload a lot of things onto your... Uh, how do you call it? Onto your uh, Google, Google classroom. classroom. Yes, so I'll do that. Hopefully, by the end of today, you have all those things in your Google okay. Classroom. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Any other question, please? Okay. So in the absence of questions, suggestions, comment, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll bring today's class to one end. Uh, once again, let me apologize for um, the delay in the class today. Um, I promise it won't happen again. Uh, hopefully on uh, Monday, we have core English. Yes, Monday, I think 11 o'clock, 11 or 11.30. Uh, we'll start that class very early. Uh, and, and then we'll see how it goes. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves. And please stay out safe. Be safe. Keep safe. Wash your hands. Do the necessary uh, things you are supposed to do. And keep safe. No going out. Stay at home. Go out only when it is necessary. We need all of you alive and healthy and strong. We need you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.